This is on the OVAP, the left ventricular assist device. The components of the OVAP are a harness with a belt, you have a system controller, you have the main line that goes actually inside the body to the OVAP device itself, you have two batteries, and the power lines that connect to the battery. <coughs> Uh, usually people that would use this device, that would need this device, uh, usually tend to have a certain heart condition. They would be either waiting for a transplant, they would need their, they would need time for the heart to heal, because the purpose of the L-band itself, it does the pumping for the heart, so the heart isn't actually doing any motion itself, which gives it time for it to heal, and if they have a condition that can be reversed, it will occur over time. Also, some people that don't have a reversible condition or cannot uh, have a transplant will usually use the LVAD for the remainder part of their life. <clears throat> the parts of the LVAD itself on the inside, like I said, the main line will go into the body and then you have here the pump, you have a hose cuff that goes from the left ventricular, the blood will be pulled from the pump going up into the aorta back out to the body. Within the pump, you have the inflow stator, the inflow bearing, the rotor, which spins using electromagnets. This will cause it to spin, which will actually be pulling the blood from the left ventricular out into the aorta. You have the outflow bearings and the outflow stator. The use of the stator is usually to uh, straighten up the blood as it's spinning, it's being all rotated around. This would set it in a, in a straight stream so it can go back into the aorta and back into the blood flow normally. In calibration for the LVAC is usually done prior to the, the patients receiving their device through surgery. In calibration, in this situation you have the system controller here which will be connected to a computer that has the software installed. You have the main line going to the LVAD device. You have a code that actually goes on the inside of the body, and this is actually the bell and the harness that's there. In performing the calibration with all the components connected and controller to computer, once connected and program running, give it a little time for the controller and the battery to synchronize. A loud beeping sound will go off once the system has calibrated. In troubleshooting, the way you want to check if a patient like passes out or isn't responsive, uh, there's really two different sections. The main thing is to call the LVAT team. They can also walk through the situation of what, how to follow the steps and everything else. Normally there's two different categories in following those steps. Uh, you want to check the patient's chest and see if there's any humming. Because normally you would check for a pulse, but because of the device and the way the blood continuously flows, there is no pulse on the patients. So you have to listen at their chest and see if there's a humming, which would be the device if it's functioning or if it's not functioning. If there is no humming, the main things you want to check for is on the system controller, check that all the lights are on. You want to check every single connection from the battery to the main line. Uh, check the batteries itself, make sure they are charged, make sure they're connected as well. <clears throat> if it's possible, try connecting the main uh, power line that usually also comes that you can connect to an outlet. That's really what it comes down to troubleshooting if the device is not functioning. When it comes to the, if you hear a patient having a hum on their chest, it means that device is still functioning, so other situations is what's causing the patient to, to not be responsive. And those are usually some type of medical situation like AMS, which is altered mental state, which usually be from diabetic coma or, or low on sugar, high, and also from seizing. There could be an infection. Also, people that have the LVAD are very prone to bleeding and clots. There's also a situation where the, the pump itself can have a high RPM and will cause the blood to tangle up and the person can seize from that. There's also a situation called the closed loop where the blood 
actually goes from the left ventricle around, and instead of going to the aorta, which goes back to the body, will actually go back into the ventricle again and continue in the loop situation. And as I said, usually when it comes to the machine functioning correctly, uh, that's usually something that has to do with something more medical, not really so much as far as troubleshooting with the device itself. And like I said, as always, make sure to contact the LVAP team, very important.